right, folks, it's about 3 o'clock on this uh, 28th of August on Friday. Big happy Friday, everybody. Fun's all over. Fun's all over. Gosh darn it, anyway. You are looking at a true gem, and I say that highly respectfully. This is a white model 252. This is a 10 foot white disc. I couldn't even begin, and I don't even know if I want to begin to start counting the possible acreage that is on this disc. Uh, not to mention quite a bit of acres for me as a little tyke. Yeah, at one point I was a little tyke. <laughs> But, uh, okay, you obviously seen that disc broke, the disc broke free. I could probably very easily just keep going for a while. It wouldn't be any harm, no foul. Not really into that kind of stuff. And uh, this, this old girl needs to be treated with some respect, which also means it's getting replaced. There's nobody out there in this country that would give me $5,000 for that disc. For some odd reason, if you were to, the answer would be no. Nope, not doing it. Okay, we got ourselves a perfect little world going on here. We did get our moisture here. The sky let loose about uh, Ah, about a quarter to bean time here today, and uh, we 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 got a healthy little we got a healthy shot. We really did. Um, so quite obviously, if you keep up with the channel, you know I took care of flattening the cow lot the other day. Uh, I'm very happy about that rain coming down and kind of leveling. It kind of helps level and beat that down as well. You know, make it a glass mirror. Uh, I, I'm not going to tell you I don't really have anything to do today, but I I ended up deciding to uh, work on the uh, the cow yard a little bit, and with that moisture that we got, it kind of it obviously moistened everything up just a little bit, so it breaks apart a little bit better. Um, the cow yard was in such bad shape with, of course, what I call bead busters and hoof splitters that uh, I felt it suitable to very slowly run that disc over it first. Uh, at some point, it'll obviously get a true dragging, uh, multiple, multiple rounds, and flatten this out like a mirror. All right, there were some comments made, and I'm, I'm really, well, I love how things work sometimes. There were some comments made on the video about the cow lot video. How do you like that English? What I'm trying to say is, you know, Ben, why don't you abide by your property there and if it's going to be shut down anyway and not uh, let back out to the cows until, you know, spring or once grazing starts, why not put a, like a winter rye or something like that in here? I really didn't even think about it. Uh, this farm, one thing this farm has never done is mess around with any kind of a winter planting, winter rye, winter wheat. Uh, wheat uh, I, I think they call it fall triticale. Uh, just never done it. What I'm trying to say is I'm actually, I'm asking for uh, some advice out there. Please let it be from uh, prior knowledge and doings of uh, when does a guy, it, it'd be winter rye, when does a guy plant it? Uh, at what rate, everything else, some tricks of the trades, I'd really appreciate it. The obvious plan here is uh, when the time is suitable, drag this down like a mirror, I've already stated that. I got some stones to get out of here, they're just a big hindrance and uh, go ahead and plant this. Because what is gonna happen is they are going to be locked out of um, the cow yard and everything for the entire winter. 
when I deem it necessary to shut down all pastures and they are now on bales fully and solely. They won't see this yard until, uh, well, really until grazing season would start next year, which is usually about the third week of May. <clears throat> I'm only assuming that that is a proper enough time that there will be a growth of winter rye in here. I don't know. Looking for your, uh, looking for your advice and uh, education on it. I'm, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to do anything if it's not too big of a risk. I mean, this, this really isn't. Um, I'm really looking forward to cleaning this, uh, this ground up. Having all the cows and the cattle in here last winter. You know, which is natural. It's, you know, things are going to get to be a disaster anyway. I, I don't care where you are or what you have. But uh, this, uh, this yard took a true big beating real bad. And uh, it's time to put some life back into it. And uh, I don't know if my words are correct. If we can create uh, a ground floor again, let's do it. All right, hey you dirty bums, you greedy dirty bums. Doesn't take too keen of an eye to see that we got some alfalfa going here. This is that alfalfa that I was not able to square bale up and all had to be round baled. I don't even want to talk about that again. That was a quite a big hit. I don't want to talk like that either. Cows are really enjoying it. Uh, I actually set this out this morning after I changed paddocks. Well, naturally, the, the cows went crazy over the paddock. They started filtering up here about an hour ago. They knew this was here, but they'd rather the pasture. Oh, does that smell good? Very happy with the way that this kept. It was done at a... Well, there's a reason I didn't square bale it. That goes without saying too wet but it had to get picked up of course before a rain shower and uh, yeah it's good feed good feed uh, make all the comments you want about the flies I know I know the entire herd got a big spray down here the other day and they're yet to get another one here in time to come maybe even tomorrow tomorrow actually probably sounds good what I do is when they all get kicked up here, when it's time to change a paddock or split another third, when I'm all done with my business out here, <coughs> of course I open the gate and it's just a floodgate. They go running out of there. I very simply stand there with that sprayer and uh, I do my darndest to uh, get everybody a, a good shot of fly spray. But that was multiple days ago. Of course, it wears off. There's been some rain, but uh, they're doing just fine. Round bale and rocks, All right? But, uh, yeah. What do you think? Huh? It's Friday. You want to knock off the rest of the day and go raise some hell? Let's do it. <laughs> Huh? You want to go? You can go if you want. Uh, it's one of my favorite heifers there for no in particular reason that was in the lot, of course, all last year. Or no, the year before. Yeah. Right? Right. You dirty bums. Uh, that's about it, folks. Just minding my business. Biding my time. It's not a whole lot to do on a day like today, except for a little odds and ends. Yeah. That's about it. Just giving you a little look, see what's going on. Uh, once again, I'm truly and respectfully asking for uh, a little bit of help and knowledge. 
uh, I'll go ahead and shoot you straight. I just kind of decided late this morning that it'd be a proper undertaking to go ahead and try something. Um, something that's new to me. That's always really, it gives me those. I think it should everybody. I think that's healthy. But uh, yeah, a little bit of information on uh, planting some uh, winter rye would be great, please. When do you plant it? The list goes on and on. When can I expect a proper growth? <coughs> At what time of the spring? You know, will it be ready uh, for a proper uh, grazing by the third week of May? So that the cows can, you know, spend two days in here first before starting the paddock system. Um, do I dare put down any fertilizer? I, I don't know. At what rate? Does it prove to uh, put it down heavy? Uh, so, uh, you, you know, we, we create basically damn near a turf again in here. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, asking for your thoughts and education on it, please. All I ask that it comes from those that, uh, that do know better and have done it before. That's all I ask. So anyway, folks, big happy Friday to you. We're going to talk to you sooner and later.